for my scientist spotlight, I will be talking about Dr. Sarah Josephine Baker. Dr. Baker was born in 1873 in Poughkeepsie, New York, to a mother, father, and an older brother. Her mother was one of the first graduates of Vassar College, which was the second college to award degrees of higher education to women in the U.S., and her father was a lawyer. Both her father and brother passed away of typhoid when she was 16. This is when Dr. Baker decided to go into medicine, as she would now need to be the moneymaker of the family. Dr. Baker gave up her full-ride Vassar scholarship to pursue a medical education. Her family fought it at first, being highly skeptical of a woman physician, but eventually agreed to it as it was the right decision. She then attended Women's Medical College of New York Infirmary. She was the first woman to earn a doctorate in public health from the New York University and Bellevue Hospital Medical Center, which is now the New York University School of Medicine. Due to the connections she was able to make while in school, she got an internship at the New England Hospital for Women and Children in Boston after graduation. During her internship and where she was placed to work, she saw the connection between poverty and ill health, and this strongly influenced the rest of her life and career. After her internship, she opened a private practice in New York in 1899. She also worked as a medical examiner for the New York Life Insurance Company. Due to a lack of funds of the private practice, she ended up working more jobs, so she also worked part-time as a medical inspector for the city. This was her introduction into public health and the beginning of her association with city health administration. In 1907, she was made Assistant Commissioner of Health. During this time, she worked on major health problems such as smallpox vaccine and the tracking and apprehension of typhoid Mary. Mary Malone was a cook in several households and had been unknowingly spreading the bacteria that causes typhoid fever. Since Dr. Baker was involved in tracking her down, the inspectors at that time decided that she should be the one to go talk to Mary, thinking that the two women would hit it off. Unfortunately, Dr. Baker's no-nonsense personality didn't quite mesh with Mary, and Mary tried to stab Dr. Baker with a fork. A few years later, Mary Malone tried to get another job in a kitchen, and Dr. Baker was involved in putting a stop to that as well. During this time, she also developed a rudimentary program of inspection for infectious diseases and a comprehensive approach to preventative health care for children. While taking a class that Dr. Baker actually thought was so boring that she had to take it twice, she came across this idea that healthy people don't die. This was her introduction to more preventative types of healthcare. In her position as Assistant Commissioner of Health, she developed a theory and had the resources to be able to test it. She was allowed 30 nurses within the East Side to go to new parents and teach them hygiene. This included what kind of clothing to dress a child in, uh, sleep practices, how to, you know, keep the house and child clean, and feeding techniques. They, all these nurses also followed up with these parents. The end result? 1,200 fewer cases of infant mortality than the previous summer. That's a very drastic drop. In 1908, the health department established a division of child hygiene. Dr. Baker was put in charge of this as the director. This division, which was later raised to a bureau, was the first government agency in the world devoted to child health. And due to this work, the infant mortality rate in New York City fell from 144 per 1,000 live births in 1908 
to 88 in 1918 and 66 in 1923. After her retirement from the Bureau of Child Hygiene in 1923, she became a consultant for the Children's Bureau and a representative on child health issues to the League of Nations. She was the first woman who was a professional representative for the League of Nations. She also wrote 50 journal articles and more than 200 pieces for the popular press about issues in preventative me medicine, as well as five books. Dr. Baker's Legacy In contrast to many of her colleagues' emphasis on laboratory-based public health, Baker focused on preventative health measures and the social context of disease. Her work with poor mothers and children in the immigrant communities of New York City had a dramatic impact on maternal and child mortality rates and became a model for cities across the country as well as the United States Children's Bureau. Because of her focus on preventative medicine instead of what you can create in a lab, Dr. Baker radically changed how we view health, specifically with children. She also spearheaded many programs and projects that continue on in some form of the, or the other. We have today Child Welfare Checks, WIC, and other programs to help new parents and their children, along with just more knowledge about what helps keep children healthy. Here are my sources where I found all of my information. And that's all I have. Thank you for listening to my presentation about Dr. Sarah Josephine Baker.